shadows with um, the book of the Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians. If you read from verse 14 down to 18, it tells us something there. There are so many books on what that we face now. What makes our book different is because we have the Lord of Christ in us. And this is a group that was orchestrated by Christ himself. For me, for the few months that I've been here,
our precious Father Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for the presence this morning. We thank you for the privilege of being here. We thank you for your angels. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the privilege of being first.
Friday and say you're welcome. We are frowning now because I can't even see beautiful smells. Turn to that person and smile very well and say you're welcome. And I want to welcome more specially because each and every one of us are special guests today. And I want to, I want to welcome more specially to the second year anniversary of praying mothers. This is um, 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 leading by, by, by the Spirit of God. We are raising mothers for tomorrow's um, leaders. We are raising mothers for tomorrow's um, 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 mothers of great generations. So we are here to, coming here today is not by mistake. Even though you are not yet a mother, we are here to learn things that will help our lives. We are not just mothers, we are wives. Things that will help our own lives, that will help our husbands that will help our healers, that will help everybody that comes in contact with us. So I want us to prepare our mind because we are not going to go back home the same way that we came here today in Jesus' name. I'm happy to announce to us that our speaker is around and she's loaded powerfully with the word of God. She's a woman of virtue, she's a woman of honor, she's a role model to a lot of us that are just growing she is somebody to look up to. Let us stand up on our feet. We want to honor her because she's a woman of honor.
Let's be seated. We're still going to worship God. I want you to be seated because um, what is happening here today is not just another meeting. I'm telling you, it's not just another meeting. God brought you here so that He can transform your life. I'm telling you, God brought you here so He can transform your life. Let me tell you what the Lord called this meeting to me. The Lord said this is a supernatural Shiloh. He said it to be a Shiloh experience. But you know what? In Shiloh, uh, people are not... Um, no, don't worry. Thanks. In Shiloh, you are not uh, careless. You come with an expectation. You come with intensity. You come with passionate desire. You pour your soul out before God. You are so intense that an onlooker might think you are drunk. That's what happens in Shiloh. Shiloh is the place of the prophetic exchange. When you come with your desire and God says, I have a higher plan for your life. This is how you are thinking about your life, but I have a higher plan. Shiloh is the place where God says, give me your little, let me hand you my much. And that's how the Lord described this place. The type of miracles that will break out of this meeting will continue to speak 10 a decade, two decades after now, 10, 20 years. The miracles God is going to birth in this meeting will still be speaking in your life. And I'm so excited it's a small meeting. Because you are not distracted. There is no noise. You can focus on your father and receive what he has for you. I'm here for a very short time. And I just want to be a vessel that the Lord can use. You know, so whatever he will have us do, we will do. We are not going to be traditional about how this meeting should go. Say amen. amen. We are going to just yield ourselves to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. I've been at meetings that opened up the next level of my life. And when you are in a meeting where you sense the Lord is about to break loose his agenda for your life, you in your shackle. You don't cross your leg and form. You pour your soul out. Amen. Amen. Desperation. Where like if you don't help me, I can't be helped. And that's the posture that Jacob had. And that's why he could wrestle with the Lord. He, I won't let you go unless you bless me. And you know, God is trying to bring us to that place. But many times we have options. Telling you about Jay, he had Jay. You know, if, 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 if this plan that I'm having or this idea God gave to me doesn't work, I will go back into paid employment. But guess what God is doing in the final hour? He's removing the alternatives of his sons and his daughters. God is, God is, he's literally cornering you till you come on your knees and you say, I am desperate for your help. Yes. So a person who doesn't understand will say, it's as if one has started to serve God. It's not as if things are getting tighter. No, God is trying to get your attention. So if it takes him putting you through a pit before he takes you to the palace, he will do it. If it takes him refusing you to have a child so that you can bring forth a Samuel, he will do it. Whatever it will take God to get your attention and bring you to a place of consecration, he will do it. So you see this message of Indomie and Egg, the shop right Jesus, is not the message of the consecrated life. This thing that says to you, the moment you get born again, God fixes everything, it's not true. The moment you get born again, you lose your options. You lose your alternatives. You may seem slow before the Lord promotes you. He may hold you back before he sends you forward. So we're going to go back into a time of worship and it's consecration worship. I want you to be a Hannah today. I want something of God to be released into your spirit, man. I am going to give total attention to this time with God. I'm, I'm, I'm here with you for another 30 to 40 minutes. But in this time, I trust the Holy Spirit to deliver His mandates to each and every one of us. And so that this meeting will be like a memorial and a landmark. Is this something I'm going to say? Do you need this go back? know this instrument have a mind of their own. You will test them the night before. The next day they will be like, oh, I'm here. 
we are showing ourselves. So you be seated as you take this time of worship because I want you to concentrate. You quietly begin to meditate in your heart on the goodness of God. Let me tell you one of the things the enemy is trying to do to the believer in the end time. He wants you to lose the revelation of the love of God. He wants you to judge God unfaithful because of the things you are going through. But the moment the enemy cannot get you to do that, your miracle is closer than ever before. So we're going to start with recognizing and remembering the goodness of God in our lives. How he has brought us through the storms. How we're still standing because of him. If you've ever given birth to a child, you have been a recipient of God's greatest miracle. So let your heart rejoice before the Lord your God. And the beautiful thing about worship is that you don't even need a song to worship your God. Let your heart remember. Say, Lord, I remember. I look back at the joy of my life and as I connect the dots, I agree that you have been good to me. You have led me through the pathways that have brought me where I am today. I remember your kindness, oh God, and my heart rejoices within me. You are my song, you are my melody. You are my cost charter, my pathfinder, my blueprint, and my dream giver. You are my rainmaker. You are my world map. You have led me on this path of eternal life. You have preserved me from hell. I am still standing because you made a way for me. I don't know how you did it, but I'm thanking you because you did it. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your dependency. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for everything that you've given. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the supernatural joy. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the joy of this. Thank you for things that I've not seen yet. I've not heard. I've not heard. I've not heard. I've not heard. Let me help bless you in the journey of life. Thank you, Thank you Lord, even in the cold waters of life. I can count to you. You are dependent. And Lord, even in the fire of life. You are dependent. You are dependent. And you are true. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so much.
the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. From a question to a to a confession. I am washed. Is that how the song goes? I am washed in the blood. In the blood.
But you say a thing to me and let me know and last day. I will put the word before you. I am not going to allow the enemy cheat me one more day by lying to me. And guess what? If those who experience the highest level of divinity possible could be deceived by the devil, Adam and Eve, they were having face-to-face -face daily conversations with God. If they could be deceived by his trick, yeah, who are you? you better put on all the whole armor of God so that you can withstand the wiles of, of the devil. devil. It is so serious that scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty, they are mighty through the God, God, God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are the strongholds? It's not a witch in there. It's what you go to. To the pulling of strongholds, casting down, down, down imagination, imagination and every high thing that thoughts, high things, arguments that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Subjection. To the obedience of the Lord Jesus, having a readiness to uh, to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Right. Do you understand? <laughs> Real spiritual warfare is not da 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 da. Uh, uh, uh. You, I would have been doing that for a bit. Have you not noticed that the biggest victories in your life happen when something shifts here? You don't fix here. You keep saying die die. Nothing's going to die. Because you are the regulator of your life. If you fix the production center, you will see transformation all around you. Many times you are saying things to change, and God is saying, I want you to change. So we'll fix our hearts. No bitterness here. No resentment. No blame trading. If you are any place in your life you don't like, ask the Lord, what sins did I sow to experience this harvest so I can change? It's not about any uncle you live with who didn't give you an opportunity for education. No entitlement mentality. Mm -hmm. Not feeling like the world owes you anything. Nobody owes me anything. Nobody owes me, Nobody owes me anything. I can't even get angry if the person doesn't call me. Because I have this band of almost 400 people who put my belly on their head. So, will it be fair if I could never complain? And now people call and say, ah, for the show, I want to get the name. You remember? Hey, can we move? You see, some of your miracles are linked to maturity. Mm -hmm. Can you stop this pettiness? You know, if there's anything that I want to say, Ladies, I want to say, can we stop being women and being spirits? The inheritance you have in Christ Jesus is a portion unto spirits. For in Christ and in the circumcision, there is neither male or female. Yes. When God looks at you, you look at a woman. It's looking at the spirits. Yes. Make heaven stand at attention when you rise, because there are a general distortion. When you come to the present, mark all the bashabaro. Fix 
ourselves. Can we humble ourselves under God and say, I want to be a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to start all over again. I don't want to be captured by carnality. Baptize me into a new world with you. Put fire on my altar. Teach me what I don't know. Let me not be a in my own eyes. Keep me humble. Keep me surrendered. Don't ever let me have an entitlement mentality. Teach me what I must know and who I must become. The sacrifice I must make. The sins I must sow.
we will not lose relationships we should keep. And we will not keep relationships we should lose. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Oh, rejoice. Take your seat. I want to pray for a final category. Close your eyes, guys. Thank you so much. If you are having a crisis in your marriage, I want you to put your hands on your chest. It's just difficult to reach the other person. And even though you are in it, you feel distant in your heart or you are wanting more. And it just feels like I'm not with my best friend. I'm not with someone who has my back. Thank you, Almighty God. I thank you. I thank you because you sent me particularly on this assignment. You said that you are going to open up a new day for marriages. Thank you for this, your daughters. I give you praise because it is you who is at work in them. I declare that this yoke of the enemy, this attack of the enemy against their marital joy and destiny is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lord, you sent me here as a representative of your anointing to destroy that yoke. I declare that the spirit of the Lord will, he said he will do three things. And that's what I want to declare. Number one, he said he will show you the root cause of this crisis. He will show you the root cause of this crisis. Therefore, I declare your heart is open to receive. And when he shows you the parts that you have a responsibility, you will make the adjustments. Number two, he says that he will silence the voices of opposition speaking against you to your husband. I declare those voices are silenced in Jesus' name. I declare those voices are silenced in Jesus' name. The third thing he said he will do is that he will, he will erect his abundance in the midst of your marriage. He said some marriages that we will pray for today are simply stressed because of financial inadequacy. So I agree with God in the name of Jesus that a new pathway of abundance is open to your family. There's a supply of abundance in your family. Now I want to remove your hands from your chest. Every married woman join in that. Every married man lift your hands and take that also. We declare an abundance of prosperity. In the name of Jesus you will not be little. Jesus, everything you need to run your home to raise your children is supplied. You will not need hand to mouth. You will not have just enough. You will have more than enough. I break the yoke of poverty and limitations. By the precious Holy Spirit, let the thing that you have never experienced begin in your life. Let your bank account begin to blossom with all kinds of currencies. The things that God has equipped you to do, the services you can offer, will be loved by many in the name of Jesus. You will come back with testimony. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's some passion. Okay, I'm out of here in seven minutes. I just want to read, uh, uh, mention a scripture and what the Lord is saying about it. And you can go back home and continue to read it and continue to meditate on it, trusting the Holy Spirit that He will instruct your heart in righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. So the contemplation that the Father has put in my heart. Um, as a prophetic word for this particular meeting is first Samuel 1. So and in that scripture, you see the Lord and you see uh, the Lord sharing to us a very interesting story of Hannah and Elkanah as well as Pelina and, and the occurrences that happened in Shiloh. Yeah. So the Lord has said that we are in a supernatural shield. And you can receive it. Even for those who are not here, you can, they can often repeat it because of what the Lord is doing in this hour. It's called the provision. Much more. Ready for more. Ready for more. 
ready for more, ready for consecration, ready for sacrifice, ready for your will, ready for purpose, ready for destiny, ready for transformation, ready for healing. If you are burdened, come. If you are burdened, come. Come, come, let's pray. There's a burden on your heart. You want to be light. You want joy overflowing. You don't want to carry any guilt, any burdens. You want yourself to be available for the big things God has reserved for you. It's your time. Lift your two hands up in surrender. And say, Lord, if there have been parts of my life where I attracted the burdens and the pain, I know that your burden is light and your yoke is easy. I receive what you have for me. Receive the peace of God. Receive the joy of God. I know if someone you love dearly is hurting you, it can be tough. And that's the next thing God has asked me to pray about. I will stand with you concerning your marriage and a new day will start. But yield right now and say, Lord, I let it out. I let the burdens out. I will no longer embrace my pains. I will no longer take an identity for my pains. Even if I feel I've been treated wrongly, I let it out. I want to encourage everyone here to take that prayer. Even if you feel you're in a good place, let's just yield ourselves. There may be burdens in our spirit that we are not even aware of. The Lord, if there's anything lurking in my heart that is still a trace of bitterness or unforgiveness or pride where I feel I was right, they were wrong. Lord, I let it all out. I receive a right heart within me. I receive a right heart within me, Lord. I receive a right heart within me. Do a quick work of righteousness in me. I'm ready for healing. I'm ready for healing. I'm ready for healing. I'm ready for change. I'm ready for baptisms of fire and of the Holy Ghost. And then in one last minute before I pray for you, pray for your tongue. Pray for your lips. Consecrate your lips to God. That in the name of Jesus, I will not speak my way out of my inheritance. I will not speak my way out of my peace. I will not speak my way into war. I will not speak my way into lovelessness. I will not speak my way into error. I will not speak my way out of my purpose. I will not speak my way out of my inheritance. I will not speak my way out of my destiny relationships. Father Lord, I consecrate my lips to you. Let the fruits of my lips be fruits of righteousness. Let the fruits of my lips be fruits of righteousness. Father, have mercy on me. If there are seeds I have sown with my lips, deliver me from their harvest. If there are negative seeds I have sown with my lips, deliver me from their harvest. If there are negative seeds I have sown with my lips, deliver me from their harvest. Give God praise for a new day. Call it a new day. Declare thank you, Father, for a new day. A right heart. A new peace. Greater joy. No more burdens. I refuse to perceive myself the way the world perceives me. I am rooted in my divine identity. I'm settled in what the Lord calls me. Not even my husband can define me. I'm defined by the name you call me. I'm ready for destiny. I'm ready for a place I've never been in you. I'm ready for an experience I've never had in you. I'm ready for a fire I've never tasted in you. I'm ready for an accuracy I've never known in you. I'm ready for revelation I've never seen in you. I'm ready for abundance I've never touched in you. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your daughters and your sons. All of us together, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Cleanse us, O oh God, and start afresh with us. Keep our right heart within us. Help us to see things clearly. Give us a kingdom perspective so that we will not lose relationships we should keep and we will not keep relationships we should lose. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Oh, rejoice. Take your seat, but still close your eyes. Close your eyes as you take your seat. I want to pray for a final category. Close your eyes, guys. Thank you so much. If you're having a crisis in your marriage, I want you to put your hands on your chest. It's just difficult to reach the other person. And even though you are in it, you feel distant in your heart or you are wanting more. And it just feels like I'm not with my best friend. I'm not with someone who has my back. Thank you, Almighty God. I thank you. I thank you because you sent me particularly on this assignment. You said that you are going to open up a new day for marriages. 
Thank you for this, your daughters. I give you praise because it is you who is at work in them. I declare that this yoke of the enemy, this attack of the enemy against their marital joy and destiny is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you sent me here as a representative of your anointing to destroy that yoke. I declare that the spirit of the Lord will, he said he will do three things. And that's what I want to declare. Number one, he said he will show you the root cause of this crisis. He will show you the root cause of this crisis. Therefore, I declare your heart is open to receive. And when he shows you the part that you have the responsibility, you will make the adjustment. Number two, he says that he will silence the voices of opposition speaking against you to your husband. I declare those voices are silenced in Jesus' name. I declare those voices are silenced in Jesus' name. Third thing he said he would do is that he will he will erect his abundance in the midst of your marriage. He said, he said some marriages that we will pray for today are simply stressed because of financial inadequacy. So I agree with God in the name of Jesus that a new pathway of abundance is opened in your family. There's a supply of abundance in your family. Now, I want to remove your hands from your chest. Every married woman, join in that. Every married man, lift your hands and take that also. We declare an abundance of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, you will not be little. In the name of Jesus, everything you need to run your home to raise your children is supplied. You will not leave hand to mouth. You will not have just enough. You will have more than enough. I pray the yoke of poverty and limitations. By the precious Holy Spirit, let the thing that you have never experienced begin in your life. Let your bank account begin to blossom with all kinds of currencies. The things that God has equipped you to do, the services you can offer, will be loved by many in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Give God praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. The things he has done are permanent. Amen. They are permanent. You will come back with testimony. Amen. 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 Glory to God. That's on passion. Okay, I'm out of here in seven minutes. I just want to read, um, uh, mention a scripture and what the Lord is saying about it. And you can go back home and continue to read it. And continue to meditate on it, trusting the Holy Spirit that he will instruct your heart in righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. So the contemplation that the Father has put in my heart um, as a prophetic word for this particular meeting is 1 Samuel 1. And in that scripture, you see the Lord, um, you see the, the Lord sharing to us a very interesting story of Hannah and Elkanah, as well as Penina, and the occurrences that happened in Shiloh. So the Lord has said that we are in a supernatural Shiloh. And you can receive it. Even for those who are not here, you can, they can also receive it because it's what the Lord is doing in this hour. It's called the provisions of the covenant. We're in a supernatural Shiloh. Where things that have been hitherto impossible will become easy. So whenever you sense that you are in an open door before your father, there's something about laying hold on the anointing. Laying hold on the anointing. Because the anointing truly breaks the yoke. For real. I'm a, I'm a recipient of that miracle where something your natural ability has not been able to do for you, the anointing does for you. Yes, ma. Amen. Amen. So you see in uh, Shiloh, you see this man who goes up year after year to worship God. First Samuel from um, uh, First Samuel chapter one, a man a zoophyte from the hill city of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of. Jeroham, son of Elihu, he had two wives, one was Hannah and the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Scripture says in verse 3 that year after year, say year after year. Year after year. Year after year. Year after year. 
Like some of you have gone to Shiloh in Ota year after year. Like some of you have gone for redemption convention year after year. Like some of you have gone for um, power must change hand month after month, isn't it? And all the sort of conventions that our assemblies hold year after year. I mean, I'm a part of an assembly. We have annual camp meetings, annual conventions, and we put so much into planning. So this is your brother. This is this is your brother, brother Elkana. He lives on number four on your street. You know him very much. You've attended his daughter's naming before from his uh, older wife. You know Auntie Penina now, she usually grants pepper at the back of your store. This is us. It's not far from us. Year after year, they will go on to Shiloh um, to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty. And there were the priests there. Um, he loved Hannah so much and he would constantly give her a double portion but the Lord had closed her womb. Say, the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord had closed her womb. Amen. <laughs> because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. A husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? You, why are you downhearted? Don't you know, don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Say ten sons. Ten sons. And um, once when she finished eating and drinking at Shiloh, when they all had finished eating and drinking, Hannah stood up and in a deep anguish she prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you look upon your servant's mystery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her her son, then I will give him to the Lord for all of the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. Um, so, uh, Eli looked at her and thought that she was drunk, but she said, look, I'm not drunk. I'm pouring out my soul to the Lord. Don't take me for a drunk woman. I've been praying here out of my anguish and my grief. It says, go in peace. May the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked. May you find favor in his eyes. May you find favor in his eyes. May you find favor in his eyes. Amen. It says that indeed, um, she got pregnant and she gave birth to a son and in the course of time she dedicated him unto god i want you to go and personally read that scripture the holy spirit will break out so much light in your heart but here are four things four or five things i want to share with you very quickly number one our religious relationship with god does not produce destiny a religious relationship with god does not produce destiny being hod or choir department Paying your tithes, giving a seed, uh, prophet offering, and your, uh, your your offerings every Sunday does not make you get God's attention. Amen. Amen. Going to redemption camp every month to pray doesn't necessarily make you get God's attention. When a moment of destiny is about to be produced in your life, God seeks to move you from a ritual. Uh, a constant regimen or ritual that you do along with the crowd to a personal encounter that is you and him alone. When destiny is about to be born in your life, God needs your attention. So we say no to a generation that has better spiritual experiences in church than in their personal life. Amen. Amen. Any experience you have in God, in the presence of God, with God's people, must not be able to compare to the revival encounters you had when you are alone with God. Some of us cry our best tears in church. Some of us sing our greatest worship songs in church. We're like, Taba don't worship the one flow. Taba Jemini Koi, I'm struggling. My sister, you have to fix it. Epic destiny events don't happen at crusades. Yes, we have been told they do. That's why we come hungry to God in church, but we don't come hungry to God during quiet time. Your biggest encounters happen in secret places. Yes, Coming year after year does not qualify you for anything. Yes, so, the sister who has been active, faithful, serving in church and is 38, and the church members are like, what oh, is your love? These are the things that confuse me. She's faithful. Still, this area of her life, is God not faithful? You're asking the wrong question. And that's why you don't know 
the end of any story, you really can't put your mouth into it. You don't know people's personal work with God. Yes. You don't know the personal consecrations is requiring of them. You don't know if they're working in obedience or disobedience. You don't know my story. That's why you can't afford to admire me. So this social media ministry thing, get off it. Don't follow me and like me as I'm a woman of God. You don't know me. You don't know if my knees are bowed, bowed in adoration to God in my private place. That I'm holding a mic doesn't make me any more anointed than you. I'm only more anointed to teach the word, but I'm as anointed as you are to live it out. And that's where the real work is. So all this craving and following people, ah, we have to chill out on it. We have to find God for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Year after year will not bring Hannah to birth. It is private anguish that leads you to a secret place where you pour your soul out to God. You know, I was praying for a sister a long time ago, and the Lord says to me to tell her, I missed you. I haven't heard your voice in years. Like I was scared. I'm like, oh? And when I asked her, she said, ah, it makes sense. That one-on-one conversation, deep conversation with God. She said, that's how I used to be. Oh, ah, it's true. 2008, 2009, I would just sit with God and talk and talk. But she's active, runs her ministry. So, year after year, does not bring Hannah to birth. It is anguish of soul in a private corner, inside the inner inner of the courts at Shiloh. That's what brings us to birth. Amen. Amen. God closed her womb. Amen. Amen. God is trying to get your attention. Some of the crises in your life are not the enemy messing with you. It is God. God is the author of the trouble you are facing. I know they didn't tell us in Bible study or in Sunday school. So we spent too long a time cursing the enemy. Saying is a mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, uncle Kinsley Emo, brother Festus Iboya, sister Kembe Arumagumbia, we have names associated with our troubles. Whereas God is there saying, I hope soon you will shift from the world and know it is me calling for you. Yes. God closed the womb. God closed the womb. God closed the womb. When God wants a someone to come out of your womb, if you won't do it his way, he will wait for you. So if you are a carrier of a great destiny, and the Lord wants to do a great thing with your life, until you understand the requirements of consecration and covenant, he will wait for you, he will get you stuck, he will push your back to the wall, till the moment you wake up and say, give no day, what do you want from me is like, hello, yeah, what you get, it, this is what I want from you. God is such an investor. If he puts something in you, he wants to reap a reward on it. Yes. And it doesn't matter how many years you cry about saying your life is not going as planned. He will wait for you. Look, he is God. A second is a thousand years. A thousand years is a second. You are the one looking at yourself and thinking biological clock is ticking, no? God can give a child as 52. So you had better be ready on time so we don't delay ourselves. Amen. Amen. He closed the womb. When he closed her womb, Penina, her rival, provoked her daily to irritate her. There are some people in your environment who are an active member, a factor, a parameter in the equation of destiny, put there by God to poke and frustrate you. You are trying to leave that job and you've been talking to God about it, he's smiling. That or God that is frustrating you is a taskmaster on the journey to destiny. Until you get what I'm telling you, you'll be there. Yeah. When we do all the interviews, they will love you. Wow, we're going to get back to you. They won't get back. Because hey. as they are going, the Holy Spirit will say, you dare not take her. You know why I'm dear, Roy? You don't understand? Hmm. All these baby Christians that are giving us cellular canal that we've been doing for years, you will wait. You will get out of the meeting, the Holy Spirit himself, who directs the heart of men, the way you go. It will just allow them to collect Bashan and Shoget. Give the second best. Go, I'm dead. It's me that is. I'm, I'm a doer. Jehovah El Doer. The God who doeth you. I do it to him one day. So there are frustrations in your life currently. And you're saying, God, Emma you you alone. AKA, God can't be embarrassed. You see those prayers that if you don't answer me on time, I yeah, babe, we belong, it's okay. 
God knows where he is. He's seated in heaven. Yes, he looks at the earth and he laughs at them in derision. He knows he doesn't need the world to recognize his on the throne. Yes, People yes. will say, where are you? I know where I am. I want to marry. Let them ask. It's fine. My business is with you, not with Aye. Yes, and then her husband said to her, am I not better to you than yes, on the journey to destiny? There will actually be attractive options and alternatives. Yes. Things that was, you know, her husband loved her enough to say, don't go for destiny. Stick with me. Be okay with not having children. I'm not complaining, but you have a second wife, man. You have children from another woman. Don't worry about it. You want to leave that job? It is your wife who loves you so desperately. I'll be like, baby. You know, there are some times they should not call you baby because you're not taking immunization. <laughs> baby, baby, you can't leave this banking work. You know what the economy is saying. We have two children. How do we sustain them? I'm an entrepreneur. You do you want to do both? You wake up and you sleep with that burden of destiny. A call for more in your life. But your wife is there saying, this banking job is better than 10 sons. If you choose a partner who is better than 10 sons, you won't have someone. You won't have the five others. Word. So you see, the matter of destiny is not just the event of destiny. It is the things destiny will produce in your life. Yeah. Refusing to marry a rich guy and following the person God chose for me, it's not just about marrying that person. It's about who I will become marrying him. Yeah. It's about the nations I can take married to him. Yeah. I have three children. Yeah. If I didn't marry my husband, you think I'll be out of the house this morning? I'm preaching in three places. I have a business meeting tomorrow. I'm running a graduating for SMC on Sunday, and then I'm out of Lagos the entire week. I'm in Abuja throughout the week. If I didn't marry my husband, I go near alone, Mama. Check on here. Check on check. So get. Before we had multiple cars, he will wake up early in the morning. Sometimes it's just a nicker, brushing his teeth on the way because I'll be hurrying him. She came on my text and meeting me. We'll be looking for alternatives. Why check my We are in it together. When he married me, preaching the gospel, we'll be waiting as I'm having the meeting. I'll be like. So you can't tell me not to do it. I laid it on the table. There are finer girls, smarter girls, but me, Jesus is the center. Yes, so the more you love Jesus, the more I will follow you. Are you okay with it? Oh no, okay. Oh, yeah, let's go. And he said, now, I will let go with the guy. I'm feeling him so much. Woo! I am myself. Sometimes I behave silly. The way I love him, I behave silly sometimes. Please, I'm gonna get around me, but I'm there. So don't choose 10 songs. Don't choose what is better than 10 songs. Go for gold with the Lord Jesus Christ. So you pour your soul out. And finally, when destiny is about to be born, I promise you there's a requirement of sacrifice in your life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You better give God what he's asking yes, so that you can get what you want. Some of you, the challenge is still your jewelry, your dress, and your shoe. When Jesus says so, it you have arguments till he stops asking. Then you think, uh, you now say to yourself, I was one thinking about it, I'm not even feeling anything. No, he doesn't strive for long with man. But when you don't pass that test, you don't move, you will come back. So you'll be having cycles. So you can know a 43 year old woman who is but a 19 year old girl in the spirit. And that's why you see a person, they get born again, they come into church, they throw themselves into Jesus. Three, four years down the line, she gets married, she's in this fantastic job, she's moving forward, starts an assignment, opens a business, she's riding great cars. You're just like, ah, God, God is not sometimes fair. Can you can hear me? Sister, why in she has been here all her life. All her life she has been here. She's 39 now. This girl, she was doing she not before. She came to Jesus, see how everything changed. You don't know what is going down. Give the father what he wants. He's not unfaithful to forget your labor of love. Doesn't matter how people perceive you or perceive me. Yes, you and I know what we are doing with our Father. Yes, yes, Close your eyes and declare that I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more. Pray from your heart in the name of Jesus. I'm ready for more. Make that consecrated commitment. And let the Lord do what he alone can do with your life.
For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. How many people are on fire for God? Let me just see your hands. Let us shout. How many people are on fire for God? If you have been blessed, shout hallelujah. Amen. the next agenda of the program, which is the interactive session. And we are so happy to tell you that our panelists are around. They are around to share their experiences. They are around to bless us with their knowledge, through the knowledge of God, of course. They are here to teach us the things that we... Okay, let me say for instance now, some of us are married and we have some unmarried people here too. There are some things that a lot of married people here would attest to that you wish you had known before you got married. There are some things, either emotionally, financially, spiritually, that you wish, oh, can I let you talk for me tell you to marry? I would, I, I would be doing better, or I would have done better. It is even a, a better avenue for the singles and misters to learn some vital things before we get married, before we make that um, lifetime commitment. So I want you to, with Jesus join in our hearts, we want to welcome on stage our panelists. We want to welcome the, the glorious mother I miss them. A wonderful woman of God. I have known her almost all my life because we attend the same church and she is one of the people that I look up to while growing up. Some people they are fire branded like they are spiritual. Oh wow, I wish I can be like this one. To go with the glory, she's still very much fire branded. Even more than how we met her when we were still young. Let us clap our hands together as we welcome on the podium Mrs. Tinuke Talabi. <laughs> Let us join our hands together. Let us appreciate her. Appreciate her well. She's a woman of honor, a woman of value, a woman of strength. She's well respected. She's a glorious wife, a glorious mother. You are welcome, ma. Amen. Amen. Um, the other person I want to introduce happened to be my own personal person on a personal level. We are different things to each other. Even this last week, somebody was telling me that he's actually your brother, not your brother-in-law. I said you are mixing things up. Is my brother-in-law not my brother? But the fact remains that brother, at the brother-in-law, at the brother, brother Shawambe. A lot of us know him. He's the father of two very stubborn generals, you know. Those guys, eh, hey. And he's somebody I respect so much. By the grace of God, I happen to live with them the first three years of their marriage. I wonder who does that. Can you share your marriage? For three years. So to an extent I understood, I saw how the growing of their marriage was. And I can say categorically that their marriage is one of the realest marriage I have ever seen. And as a matter of fact, a lot of things I learned there are the things I am using now as a married woman. Let us jam our hands together as we welcome Mr. Olushola Badejo, aka Emma. Now we are going to welcome the third person on the panel. The last but not the least is Abala by marriage. Almost 20 years in marriage. I'm sure when you got married, gone. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Over Jesus. Over 20 years of marriage. You can imagine, I wonder what you want to talk about marriage that he doesn't know. Is it the finances, the emotions, the falling in and out of love, the different issues that we women in court can give. I'm sure he has a whole lot of experience when it comes to that. Let us join our hands together as we welcome on stage Mr. Kule Odenji. You're welcome, sir. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, let's go 
straight to the question before because we don't have much time. Personally, the first thing that has been on my mind that I usually love to ask married women or married men, any married person I meet, is a particular question. I want every one of us to react to it, like the panelists. And the question is, is love enough to sustain marriage? Now, this is the reason why I'm asking. You know, when you want to get married, the first thing that comes to mind is, love like, I true for that guy. I, li I like his um, sense of dressing. He can speak good English. He has a great work, like, I love him. Now, the question is in marriage. Can only love sustain marriage? Regardless of any other thing. Okay, because I love this person, I can be married to this person as long as I want. Because I have, regardless of whatever happens, so far I love this person, my marriage will still work. Starting with Kema. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I would want to say this, really. I, I like being truthful, I like being down to it. And um, you know, see, when I am talking about me, my sister would just be like, I think, okay, hey, hey, mama, so obey him. <laughs> and uh, why I'm taking time to say this is because when I say something, it, it sounds so abnormal to people. And they'll just be like, it hey, will make sense. But the truth of the matter is, that is just me, personally, from my heart, my perspective to things. So when it comes to marriage, I must confess, I didn't marry out of love. I married based on obedience. It's not as if I don't have criteria. It's not as if I did not have standards. In fact, the truth of the matter is, when I was growing and I was like, God, when I want to marry, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I was stating it all out, you know, I didn't enter into any relationship because God was saying that you are not ready, it's not time, just wait, so I kept waiting. And when I was saying, God, how long will I wait? 25 years, no, not a single man that I, have, I can say I have caught it. All because I'm waiting. So how long do I wait? God said, if you are now ready for marriage, read a book. And that book, I would always love to introduce it to anybody. It was titled, No More Two But One, written by Billy Akoni. It was then I discovered I had idols in my heart. That's why the fact that I thought I was a Christian, obedient to God, following God. I had idols that God was saying, you go, criteria he was suiting, because he was fair and so by the time I now saw it, I was now saying, God, I now said to myself, I am ready for whatsoever you will give me to marry, as far as it is your will. So that answers my question. Love is not the thing, but following God 100% is the thing. So I don't believe in falling in love. I believe in build, growing in love. Love grows. As he gave it to me, I did not appreciate it at first. I, I had so many things against it. I was like, ah, hello, what is this? But I can tell you that at the end of the day, just as Pastor Carol, we were saying that everything she was doing, she was able to do it because her husband was a solid backup that made her sense, her words to stand. So also what God has given me. It keeps my words standing physically. So my spirit man can easily be seen everywhere. So only love is not. Obedience is the key. Then love follows. Okay. I wanted to say praise God, but I remember that we still were in the garden of the children of God, so we can still praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I think my sister had actually uh, given the right answer, but if you ask from my own perspective, huh? apart from love, fine, it is good to love. You fall in love with the person that you really feel good cool with. You get God's direction on that person to move ahead. But still, we have a lot of, uh, in quote, only relationship that turn out to be to to marry and eventually, in no time, they are all set apart. Even so-called men of God. But the only thing I will say is to sustain the marriage, it only takes the grace of God. And I will add it up with all my start said. Then couple with obedience to the instructions of God. It's, it is not enough to love. You find that when you get into marriage, at some point, you look at your partner and you be like, man, how did we get there in the first place? There are times you feel like, but again, when you remember, 
that you didn't get into this on your own uh, on your own will. You had got back into get into this. You remember the grace. You were able to come, go back to that person that had told you to go ahead. Then you find yourself, you know, praising up again and saying, okay, let's keep moving. So for me, I will count it all and say, Jesus, Jesus is, the, is the only center of any marriage that is still alive today. Be it one year.